In 2002, the value of ground fish and nephrops caught by Scottish trawlers and seiners was 139 million pounds. The most valuable commercial species include nephrops, haddock, cod, monk, whiting, sole, place, and megrim. In many areas, they live together on or close to the seabed and are often caught at the same time. We call this a mixed fishery. These fish and shellfish have a wide range of shapes and sizes. Ideally, we want to harvest each species when they've had a chance to spawn and when they've reached a reasonable weight. The juveniles should be allowed to escape, but one mesh size will not be suitable for all. For example, cod grow to a much larger size than whiting. We should ensure that, for each, only the right size range is caught. There's another problem with mixed fisheries. A skipper is allowed to take only a limited amount of each species, his quota. When a vessel's quota runs out for cod, the skipper will want to keep catching haddock and other commercially important fish. In a mixed fishery targeting several species at once, the over quota catch must be thrown back into the sea dead. This is a waste of resources, just like discarding juvenile fish. So what can be done to solve these problems? This video shows how different fish react to fishing gear. It explains how the species might be separated during fishing so that the right age range of each fish is caught. Can new gear designs help to reduce waste? Underwater observations by the FRS Marine Laboratory in Aberdeen, Scotland, have shown that the capture of fish by trawls and seines is not simply a sieving process. The doors which spread the net and the bridle wires connecting them to the net shepherd the fish inwards so that they congregate in the center of the net mouth. Fish are herded here for a time, but eventually they become fatigued. As fish enter the net mouth, their natural reaction is to maintain a certain distance between themselves, other fish and the netting. They tend to keep station with the moving netting pattern, but gradually they tire. They become more densely packed as the net narrows towards the cod end. Underwater observations have also revealed that different species react in characteristic ways when entering the net mouth. Nephrops, or prawns, can swim, but it's not long before they tire. Flatfish swim ahead of the ground rope with typical short bursts of tail flicks. They may find an escape path under the ground rope if the bobbins are large diameter. They enter the net low down and initially stay close to the belly netting. In the cod end, however, they can be at any level. Other species can also escape under the bobbins. Like flatfish and prawns, cod tend to enter the net at a low level, not more than half a metre above the ground rope. But when haddock tire, they rise high ahead of the ground gear before turning back into the net. Whiting and saith rise higher than ground fish, but lower than the haddock. There are clear species differences in behaviour at the mouth of the net. Further back in the net, fish are more tightly packed, but still behave in a controlled way. When in the cod end, however, the situation is very different. The fish are restricted by each other and by the surrounding netting, and there may be turbulence. Separation by species may be more difficult. Escape is sometimes passive and sometimes active. But to solve the mixed fishery problem, we want to separate the different sorts of fish and then use the right size of mesh to catch only the mature sizes of each. How do we modify traditional gears to separate some of these species during trawling? Each fishery may need quite different solutions, depending on the mix of fish. There are major new research initiatives in many countries, so let's look at some options being considered. 
Haddock and Whiting rise as they enter the net mouth, while others keep low. A horizontal panel of netting along the length of the trawl can be used to separate them. This divides the net into upper and lower levels. Each cod end can have a different mesh size. This next design is a modification of the separator panel idea. A similar but shorter panel is fitted. The leading edge starts directly above the aft edge of the first belly panel. Parallel ropes are fitted, running back from the ground rope and rising to meet the leading edge of the separator panel. The idea is that nephrops and flatfish drop between the ropes and enter the lower cod end, whereas roundfish are guided upwards by the rising ropes and enter the upper cod end. Another version of the separator trawl has been used since 2000 in the Irish Sea nephrops fishery. A short, inclined netting panel is inserted ahead of the cod end. There's a small gap under the leading edge of the panel to allow nephrops to pass into the cod end. At the upper end of the panel, an opening is made in the top sheet to allow all fish to escape. Another way to release all ground fish is to raise the foot rope slightly. Here, weighted droppers are attached to the fishing line of a Scottish seine. The height off the seabed is determined by the length of the droppers. Bobbin or rockhopper ground gears can also be modified to do the same job on rougher ground. The length of the vertical strops determines the height of the fishing line above the seabed. Since trawling first began, low headline trawls have been used to target species such as flatfish which stay low down near the seabed. These designs may release round fish like haddock and whiting which tend to rise as they fall back in the trawl mouth. Cutting back the square so that it does not overhang the ground rope may also be effective for a limited number of target species. Nephrops have been retained well by this gear. Most cod may also be retained but only around 30% of haddock and whiting. In fisheries where two species of very different shape or size are present, grids have been used effectively to separate them. An angled grid blocks entry to the cod end. Small species such as shrimp and nephrops cannot react and they pass through the grid while it guides the larger species either into another cod end or out of the net altogether. These devices are used extensively in many shrimp fisheries to give clean shrimp catches and avoid finfish bycatch. Under European legislation, a 15 mesh long panel of large 140 mm meshes must be placed in the top sheet behind the headline of prawn trawls. The aim of this panel is to separate round fish by allowing them to escape before they reach the extension or cod end area. The catch of nephrops is largely unaffected. Applying a similar principle, beam trawls are required to have a 180 mm mesh panel behind the headline to aid the escape of round fish, particularly cod. Here, an area of square mesh netting has been inserted in the top panel of the cod end. The meshes stay open under tension. The round fish attempt to escape mainly upwards, and to do so, fish may have to swim powerfully across the flow. Smaller fish may not be able to swim fast enough, and may get damaged or even stuck. If separating devices like the ones we've just seen are an option, it's important for fishermen and managers to discuss how to implement them. Trials have shown that skippers can make these new gear designs work. Stocks should improve as a result. What's more, there are other benefits. Cleaner catches mean shorter sorting times, better quality fish and better value. Mixed fishery problems need to be solved to make better use of the stocks. Smaller fish of all species should be allowed to escape and grow rather than be discarded dead into the sea. Also, fishermen want to continue fishing for one species 
when the quota for another has been taken up. This video has shown that there is potential to separate species during fishing. Fishermen and gear technologists from FRS Marine Laboratory Aberdeen are working together in several EU-funded projects to develop these ideas into practical and effective separator gears to help safeguard the future.